Hello and welcome to my lesson on stasis theory or the stasis. This lesson will augment the two lessons in Blackboard, the PowerPoint and the uh, Word document or the PDF. So to make this lesson work, we need to begin by picturing ourselves in a scenario. You're 17 years old, you're coming back home after a great late night party, you are late for curfew, and you're sneaking in the house. You think you've made it, you think you're clear, and all of a sudden, the light pops on, and you're busted. Normally, uh, we go right to excuses. We say something along the lines of, oh, well, I got stuck in traffic, or uh, it's not my fault because my car wouldn't start, or I'm late because I had to give someone a ride home. These are typical excuses. Uh, but what we're doing as an excuse is actually formulating an argument. Um, and there are also many sorts of other kinds of arguments that can be made when it comes to uh, curfew. You might say something like, oh, well, I had a curfew. Oh, wrong one. I'm sorry about that. I had a curfew. I wasn't aware of that. Or you might look at something like, uh, the curfew was at 10? I thought you said it was 2. Let's make sure we get that all there. I thought you said it was at 2 o'clock. Or, you know, I tried to call. You said to call if I was having problems. I tried to call. I couldn't get through. My phone wasn't working. Um, or, um, I didn't know what time it was. I lost track of time. We might even go um, into some something nicer. We might say something like, I need to help someone change a flat tire, someone needed to ride home, you know, those sorts of things. Um, these are our, our typical excuses. You know, I might say something um, along the lines of, well, what good is a curfew anyway? I always break my curfew. That's a pretty brave statement to make. Uh, or, aren't I a little too old for curfew? These are some uh, arguments that we might make, but each of them is an argument. And we can see that uh, they all fall under a category. I will open up this last one in just a moment. But uh, how this works is that it formulates the stasis a theory, which uh, is an ancient Greek law system that basically asks simple questions like, what was the crime? Did it actually occur? Who were the plaintiff and the defendant in the crime? What was the crime? Uh, what was the effect of the crime, and then uh, we get to the last one, procedure, what should be done about the crime once you've established that there was a crime and that you know so much was stolen, um, what do we do? So what we have is a series that we have to go through from one through five. So before we can go into our curfew arguments or maybe even uh, punishments, you're right, I should be grounded, we have to first establish that there was a curfew. If there was no curfew, the rest of this is, is doesn't even make sense to discuss. So you have to start there. Uh, after that, once you've established there was a curfew, you can look at other things. Well, what time was this curfew? Was it 10? Was it 2? Did mom say one thing and dad say the other thing? Does that get you off the hook? Um, do any of these help reestablish what time the curfew was? But you can't establish when the curfew was or uh, anything like that until you establish that there actually was a curfew, that there was, in, you know, you're establishing the fact, and then you have to define it. After that, you might go into causation. Um, it can help in this argument. Well, it's not my fault because I got stuck in traffic. But in doing so, you're admitting that there was a curfew that you knew what time it was. But here you're saying, I didn't break it on purpose. I wasn't doing it maliciously, I did it as an accident. My car wouldn't start, I had to get someone to ride home. And then after that, we can go into evaluation. But only to do that, we have to say, yes, there was a curfew, it was a specific time, I did miss it on my own, there was no extenuating circumstance that made me break it. Uh, I'm always breaking it, you might say. Therefore. Uh, we have to evaluate the purpose of my curfew. Why do I have a curfew? Are the questions that we would be asking and making this argument as a way of saying that the curfew isn't doing any good. I'm always breaking this curfew. Perhaps we need to do something about it. And that moves us from evaluation into procedure. So we might say, 
oh, I'm always breaking curfew, let's eliminate it. Or, you might say, well, let's move it back. You're always getting home at midnight, so perhaps we should move it to midnight instead of 10 o'clock. We trust you enough. Um, and again, that's what we have to look at with evaluation. Why don't do I have curfew? Or don't you trust me? And if all these don't work, we have finally the the punishment. What needs to be done? So we always have to start by establishing a fact. Then we have to define certain characteristics of that fact. You may or may not have causes to evaluate, and then um, you have your evaluation of the fact, the definition, various arguments, and then decide what needs to be done. We can also see this in another argument uh, or another scenario. You have your uh, needy friend, the one that always calls you ten times a day, um, talks on and on about the same thing all the time and never does anything. So let's say you have that friend and they call you and you don't answer the phone. And the next day that friend sees you and says, hey, I called you and didn't answer. Why didn't you? I really needed to talk. Well, again, we usually go into our excuses. We might say, I was in the shower, or I was busy, I couldn't answer the phone, or something like, well, I couldn't hear my phone, it was on vibrate, or my phone got taken away. We might even go into something like, I didn't know you called. Well, with our cell phones, it's hard to, to actually do that anymore, but you can blame it on other things. I have AT&T, and they don't always work. Um, you can even go into your evaluation, which would be something like, I didn't feel like talking, I'm sorry. And then we might even say, didn't you know not to call me when I was at work or at this time or not so late? These various things. These are all different ways to establish where the argument is. But in doing so, uh, you first have to actually say, oh, you called. I wasn't aware that you called. If you didn't know that this person called, the person cannot be mad at you. Well, they could probably still be mad at you, but, you know, not justifiably and hold it against you. You can't be punished or, or whatever for not knowing there was a phone call um, unless there were established consequences. Um, but saying you couldn't hear my phone, it was on vibrate instead of ring, or it was off, it ran out of power, the battery died, all these things are saying, yes, you called, but I was unable to know when or why or how you called or in causation I wasn't able to answer that phone call uh, despite knowing you called but it's not my fault I would have gladly have talked to you or finally we move into evaluation I didn't feel like talking to you so you're saying I knew you called I could take your call but I didn't want to or we are in a situation where it was pre-established that I would not take your call if you had called at this time. So I told you not to call. And then we can even go into procedure. Don't you have any other friends? Can't you talk to somebody else? Does it always have to be me? Why don't you call somebody else instead of me and, and deal with the problem? Or, very extremely, don't ever call me again. And you just end the friendship. But it works through the series of fact, definition, cause, evaluation, and procedure. And we can see this in all different types of writing, whether it's something that you're reading or something that you're writing yourself. For instance, you have a birthday and your grandma sends you a check or a $20 bill, and you write a thank you note. That thank you note first has to establish why you're writing, saying, hey, I received that money you sent me, grandma. And then once you establish why you're writing, you kind of define the purpose. Thank you for sending me the money. Um, there may or may not be a cause in this. It's a thank you note. The causation is getting the money, or your mom made you write it, that sort of thing. But in your thank you note, you'd say, hey, I received the, the money, Grandma. Thank you for sending it to me. I really appreciate it. And then you might say, well, I plan to buy a new sweater, or uh, I plan to buy a new game, or, or something like that. Donate to charity. Here's what I'm going to do. And that's how the Stacys work. But you can't just write to Grandma and say, I bought a new PS3. She has to know why you're telling her that, and what a PS3 is, of course. Uh, but that starts by acknowledging their seat. I received your money. Here's what I did with it. I really appreciate it. It also works for a letter to the editor. Um, 
so-and-so is angry about the new school levy. I pay my taxes and I went to school. I'm angry about the levy. Um, that sort of thing. And goes through and says, you know, I'm writing about this thing. Here's what I think about it. It's mainly evaluate, evaluative or procedural. Uh, let's not have a new taxation rate change, uh, that sort of thing, or let's do it. Uh, we see that all the time, but it always has to establish what is being written about, why, definition and causes, and then what the person thinks, and usually what needs to be done. Um, <clears throat> anything that you read, whether it is an editorial or an essay in class, or even an advertisement, will go through these various steps. So uh, we might consider a research paper, something that just wants to explain something. That is just looking at stasis level one. In fact, maybe up to number two, definition, but that's about as far as it will go. An argumentative paper will go into procedure. It'll say we need to do this about something or this about something or change your mind about something. Um, an evaluative essay, um, it's kind of like your book review where you read something, but you have to first say, okay, here's the book I read, here's what it is, and here's what I think about it. And you would pretty much stop there unless you want to say, you should read it or you should avoid it at all costs, but that's about as far as you can go. But you always have to start by establishing the facts and then moving on to definition. Sometimes you'll have causation, sometimes you won't. For instance, if you have um, a paper on climate change, global warming. First you have to say this paper is going to be about climate change. You have to define what you mean by it, climate change, global warming, establish these very things, saying yes there is a, raise, a rise in temperatures or no there isn't. Here's what we mean. You can do causation. It is caused by human activity or it's not caused by human activity. Only once we establish these things can we say well people need to do this and that. But you also have this, you know, establish the negative side effects or the positive attributes of climate change um, before you can even say we need to do something about it. You just can't say we need to stop doing this without establishing why, which would be these other four things. So this is going to help you formulate your capstone, work with your editorials a little bit more. Um, the second half of this lecture I will address some of your actual topics and show how we can use the stasis theory to work with them. Uh, but that's all I have for this. Move on to the second lesson if you would like.